I've been a member here almost 20 years, and then prior to that, my father, my parents were members. So I played here since about 1984. So not as long as Tom Olson. I think it was more than 50 years. But but so I've played here since 1984, and, and it's really a spectacular piece of ground. And the golf course is, it's an excellent golf course. It's a lot of fun to compete on. There's five par threes, there's a lot of terrain changes. Uh, Maxwell Greens add a lot to the competition. Uh, puts a premium on, on ball striking, but also puts a premium on, on putting as well. So it's, it's a true championship test, I would say. I've been a member here since 1974. Been playing uh, golf here in various tournaments since 1975 as a first year. Um, one of the things that really makes uh, Omaha Country Club unique uh, is the topography, the different heights that you're shooting at, and the and the the greens have always been very challenging. A lot of slopes and. Uh, uh, nuances that cause a lot of people a lot of problems uh, and of course we're out here in the country so we are truly a country club. I've been a member at Omaha Country Club for uh, over 50 years now. Uh, played my first round here uh, in the summer of 1963 uh, so I, I know the course about as well as anybody. Uh, I think the thing that makes it special for me is that uh, uh, I love the old-fashioned parkland courses, uh, I love the trees and the hills, and this is really a shot maker's course, it's not a hitter's course. Uh, you have to be able to uh, control the golf ball right, left, and uh, keep it in the fairway. If you're in the trees, you're not going to shoot a good number, and, and that's really the way that I grew up learning how to play golf. The original course uh, was built in 1927. Uh, there was a major renovation in the mid-50s when they got Perry Maxwell to uh, come out and redo eight of the greens and move a bunch of the greens too. Uh, for example, number uh, five and six were both par four holes. They changed them to a par three and a par five. Uh, he, he redesigned eight of the greens and made them, uh, in his typical architectural style, very undulating and very, very difficult, especially once the stint meter readings got up over 10. And then uh, they, Maxwell also um, adjusted a few other areas, number 12, he moved the green on 12, he moved the green on number 10, and, and basically rebuilt all the green complexes. And then that was 1951, so over the following 60 years, um, various greens committees and, and superintendents made slight tweaks to the golf course and uh, extended tees, moved greens here and there, flattened a couple greens and kind of had disturbed the Maxwell gym to some extent. We've uh, changed a number of greens over the years, uh, added length over the years, uh, uh, added bent grass to the fairways over the years, which we did I don't know, it seemed, seemed like yesterday, it was probably 15 years ago. Um, had uh, lost a lot of trees, but at the same time uh, increased the, what I'd call the aesthetic beauty of the, of the country club, better air movement, so actually the course is probably easier to keep in good shape. And so in 2006, uh, Keith Foster, a golf course architect, with uh, a specialty in renovating old masters type golf courses, uh, Perry Maxwell, Alistair McKenzie golf courses, and, and Tillinghast. Yeah. And we hired Keith Foster to come in and, and he put together a master plan for the entire golf course. And it, it touched everything uh, tees, fairways, bunkers, greens, green surrounds. And the membership approved. Uh, the work and so in 2007 uh, we, we renovated the entire golf course and added about 400 yards, uh, restored all greens to, uh, by that time there were 11 Maxwell greens remaining 
So we duplicated those 11 greens and then the other seven greens uh, Keith restored based on some pictures in some cases and then other cases he had to work off of other Maxwell examples to rebuild uh, Maxwell duplicates. And I think they did a wonderful job because the greens look like they, they've been here since day one. But um, really the uniqueness of the Omaha Country Club and what hasn't changed is the ups and downs and people look at the scorecard and they go oh, this is a short golf course and it's not a short golf course because you're hitting into hills and even though it may be short if you don't hit the right place it goes in the rough and then on top of that you have the slope of the greens and that hasn't changed